Hey everyone, this is Vipul Gupta. I welcome you all in this Power BI tutorial. In today's video, we are going to talk about DAX in Power BI. So guys, basically we will be understanding what is DAX in Power BI, various components of a DAX equation. And at the end, we will be understanding how we can implement a DAX equation in Power BI. So guys, this video is going to be real fun as it is loaded with lot of real life examples. So without any further delay, let's get started. All right. So guys, first of all, let's quickly understand what is DAX in Power BI. So talking about the full form, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions. Right. So now on the screen, you can clearly see that there are two things, Data Analysis and Expressions. So guys, as the name is clearly indicating that DAX is a feature in Power BI that gives you the leverage or capability to write some expressions which we can use for analyzing our data in Power BI. Right. So now, for the guys who have experience working on Microsoft Excel, they must be aware that they can write some calculations or expressions to analyze their data in Excel. So DAX in Power BI is the counterpart of that similar feature. DAX in Power BI is even more advanced version of that. So guys, this is all about what is DAX in Power BI. Now let's take the next step ahead and understand various components of a DAX equation, right? So guys, talking about the ideal structure of a DAX equation, there are two things. On the right side, we have the DAX formula and on the left side, we have the DAX name, right? Now let's understand each of these components one by one. The first component is DAX name. So guys, this is something which is defined by the user himself. So here user has the total leverage that he can give any name to the DAX equation that he is writing, right? So here user can use alphabets, numericals, special characters and white spaces. For example, I want to calculate the year over year growth of my company with respect to 2020 year, right? So here I can create a DAX and I can give a name like this. Year over year growth. 20, 20 percentage equals to, right? So guys, this is a DAX name that I have given to my DAX equation. So here you can see that I have used alphabets, I have used white spaces, I have used numericals, and I have used special characters, right? So here user can give any name to the DAX that he is creating. It totally depends on user himself, right? Now let's move ahead and understand the second component. So second component is DAX formula, right? So guys, DAX formula is the component where you are supposed to write the mathematical expression or calculation that will give you some output and it will be stored under the DAX name, right? So guys, this is all about the two components. So we understand how we can write a DAX name, right? But how can I write a DAX formula is something that we are going to discuss now, right? So while writing a DAX formula, you can use four basic components. Let's discuss each of those components one by one. So the first component is functions, right? So what are functions? So basically, Power BI offers you a rich library of inbuilt functions, which we can use while writing a DAX formula. So talking about some examples, so Power BI offers you some aggregation functions like sum function, mean, median, mode, count, etc. Right? Then we have some date time functions, for example, date add. Then we have some calendar functions like calendar, calendar auto, and many more. So we can use all those functions while writing our DAX formula, right? Now moving ahead, let's discuss the second component. The second component is operators. So guys, here we are talking about the mathematical expression. So obviously we'll be using some operators here. Now there are three types of operators that we can use while writing our DAX formula. The first one is arithmetic or mathematical operators. For example, if we are supposed to add two numbers that we can use plus. If we want to subtract two numbers, then we can use minus. If we want to divide, then we can use this division symbol. We have multiplication and exponential. Now, these are the arithmetic operators, right? Now, talking about the second category, we have comparison operators, right? For example, you want to compare two numbers. So, we have the greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, and equal. So, guys, these are the comparison operators that we can use in a DAX formula. Third type of operator is special operators. For example, we have ampersand. So guys, this is a special operator which we use to concatenate two different strings, right? Then we have double ampersand, double equal to, and many more. 
So guys, these are the operators that you can use while writing your DAX formula, right? Now let's move ahead and understand the third component. So the third component is constant values, right? So guys, the name is clearly depicting what is a constant value. So constant value is something which will not change, right? But what are various scenarios or examples where we can use a constant value? Let's discuss that, right? So for example, we have a particular table where we have a particular column by the name year, right? And in this column, we have some values like 2019, 2020, 2021, etc. Right? So these are the values in the year column. Right? Now we got a request that corresponding to each year value, I want to put some prefix. Right? For example, I want to put F Y. Right? So guys, F Y is a constant value that I want to use as a prefix in all these records. Right? So what I can do, I can create a DAX formula and I can use F Y as a constant value corresponding to this year column value right now let's proceed ahead and understand the fourth and the most important component so the fourth component is dax variables right but guys what is a dax variable so dax variable is a variable under which we store the output of a dax formula right so on the screen you can see that we have dax name and dax formula so the output of a dax formula will be stored under this dax name so DAX variable and DAX name are the same things, right? Now, Power BI gives you the leverage that you can use the predefined DAX variables in the other DAX equation, right? Let's understand this with the help of an example, right? For example, I have calculated a DAX by the name revenue, right? So this revenue is basically the sum of total sales orders that we have received, right? So guys, now I have created another DAX to calculate the total cost that we have put in our company, right? So we can call the DAX as cost, right? Now, I got a request that I want to understand the total profit of my company. So now, what is the formula of profit? So basically, profit equals to revenue minus cost. So now this is the formula of profit, right? Now in order to create a DAX by the name profit in our Power BI, what we can do, we can create a DAX profit and instead of calculating the revenue and cost again and again, I simply can use this DAX and this DAX. So I will be using revenue as it is minus cost, right? So guys, these are two different DAX variables that I have calculated in Power BI. Now, in order to calculate another third DAX profit, I have used them as it is, right? So guys, this is the beauty of DAX in Power BI that you can use all these components to write even a very basic calculation or expression to a very complex or advanced level calculation, right? So guys, till now we understand what is a DAX, various components or structure of a DAX equation, right? And we understand all the basic components that we can use while writing a DAX equation or DAX formula, right? So guys, now let's move ahead and understand how can we implement a DAX in Power BI, right? So guys, a DAX equation can be used to perform three types of calculations. The first type of calculation is measures. Second is calculated column. And third is calculated table. But do you know what is the difference between all these three types of calculations? Let's discuss them one by one, right? So let's start with measures. So what is a measure? So basically, a measure can be defined as an aggregation or calculation which is performed at the data set level. Let me give you some examples. For example, we have a table by the name sales and every record is representing a sales transaction, right? Now, I want to calculate the total sales of the company. So what I can do, I can take the aggregation of sales column. So that will give me a measure by the name total sales, right? So total sales is a measure. Similarly, suppose we have been asked to calculate the total number of orders that we have received in our company. So what we can do, we can create a measure using a DAX equation to count the total number of orders, right? So that is all about what is a measure and we have discussed some examples around that. Now let's move ahead and understand what is a calculated column, right? So guys, now we know that measure is something that we calculate at the data set level or the aggregate level, right? But 
what is a calculated column? So calculated column is something that we calculate corresponding to every observation, right? For example, suppose we have a table, right, by the name products. Now this products table has three columns. So we have product ID, we have product name, then we have product price, right? So these are three columns which are available in this data set. The name of the data set is products, right? Now we have been asked to calculate a category tag corresponding to the price of a particular product, right? For example, if the cost or price is greater than 500, then we can say that it is a high value product, right? Similarly, if the cost is less than 500 then we can say it is low value product right now we have to create such a tag corresponding to every product right so here what we can do we can create a calculated column right so now what we can do we can use a dax equation to create a calculated column so we can call it product category right so this is the dax name right on the right side what we can do we can use a logical test so i am here using a if function right now if price is greater than 500 so guys this is a function in power bi this is the first argument where i am passing the logical test so now if the output of this logical test is positive then it will be giving us high right else it will print low so guys, this is an example of a DAX equation, right? Where this is the DAX name and this is the DAX formula, right? Now using this DAX, we can create a column by the name product category and every record will have a corresponding value, right? That is why it is called as calculated column, right? Now let's move ahead and understand the third type of calculation. So the third type of calculation is a calculated table, right? So guys, a calculated table is way different than the first and second type of calculations. Reason being, a measure and a calculated column will return a scalar output, right? Whereas, a calculated table will be returning a table as the output. So guys, that is the major difference between the first two type of calculations and the calculated table, right? So now let's understand a calculated table or the scenarios where we can use or create a calculated table in Power BI. Right. So let me give you an example. Now suppose we have a sales table again. Sales table. So guys, every record in this table is representing a sales transaction. Right. Now as a data analyst, we have been given a task that corresponding to every day in a particular month, we need to calculate the total sales. Right. For example, we have this table and now we have been asked that corresponding to 1st January 2nd January up to 31st January, right? So for all these 31 days, I want to calculate the total sales at day level, right? So this is the ask. Now there is a condition that corresponding to a particular day, if there is no sales, then we have to print a zero against that. For example, on 18th January, there is no sales. So corresponding to that, we have to print zero as the sales amount, right? But guys, there is a challenge here. So the challenge here is that in the sales table, there is no transaction happened on 18th January, right? So in the desired output, that is a table where we have the date and the corresponding sales. So we will not be able to print a record for 18th January, right? Because there is no observation or transaction in the sales table for 18 January, right? So we are stuck here. Now in order to solve this, what we can do, we can create a calculated table, right? So now we can use DAX equation to calculate a date table with all the dates starting from 1st January to 31st January, right? So let me show you how we can do that, right? So in Power BI, we can create a DAX. So I am calling this new table as date table. So this is the DAX name that I am giving to my newly created table equals to. So now in Power BI, there is a function 
calendar function right so now we can use this calendar function to create a table which will contain all the records starting from 1st january to 31st january right so under this function we need to pass two arguments the start date and the end date right so we can use this function to create a calculated table right so in our case what we can do we can use calendar now the starting date will be suppose it is for 2022 right so 2020201 so this is the 1st january right 1st january 2022 so this is the start date and the second argument would be 2020201 right so guys this equation will return us a table with all the records starting from 1st january till 31st january right so guys here we have learned how we can use a dax equation to create a measure a calculated column and a calculated table so guys here we have learned how we can use a dax equation to perform three type of calculations a measure a calculated column and a calculated table right so guys this is all about what is dax various components of a dax equation and how can we implement a dax equation in power bi so guys thank you for watching this video and in the upcoming video we'll be performing some practical examples by using the power bi desktop application and write some dax by ourselves right so guys till then take care bye bye